Happy Thursday, Raw Food Rehab. It's January the 21st, 2010, and I am excited because today I get to go to my eye doctor. I've had this appointment for weeks. Getting in to see my eye doctor is, I think, more difficult than getting into the White House, apparently. But um, those of you who have known me for a while know that I don't typically have these, you know, 1992 circa Coke bottle glasses on. Um, I normally wear contact lenses, gas permeable. But something happened to my eyes around Christmas time that my eyeballs and my gas permeables were no longer compatible. And so um, I guess just with the holidays and the rush of the new year, I wasn't able to get in until today. So I'm making this video and then I'm gonna go see Dr. Blaine Snodgrass. He is my main man and see what he can do. See what his opinion is. I mean, one cool thing about the raw food diet is a lot of people I know who have been at this for an extended period of time who are pretty uh, pristine in what they're eating have actually had their vision correct itself. Now, I haven't had that miracle happen yet, but I wouldn't say that I'm 100% raw all the time either. So there's that little variable in there. Um, but it's always something to work for and to, to hope for. You just never know. Maybe my eyes are actually correcting themselves. We'll find out today. So, But the subject I wanted to talk about, the meat, if you will, of today's topic is, so I'm kind of eating a raw vegan diet now, and um, am I getting an FB12? Do, do I need to supplement my diet with B12? That, that question comes up a lot in vegetarian, vegan, or um, raw foodist circles. It's a great question, and it's one that I believe needs to be addressed. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I am a, uh, I do have a health counseling certificate, but, you know, I am here as more of a, a natural health enthusiast, and I have done copious amounts of research over the last, um, actually the last 20 years, but since we're going raw five years ago, even more research into this. And um, my personal opinion, okay, this is my personal opinion, is I believe that everyone who is on a raw vegan, exclusively raw vegan diet, should be supplementing with B12. Now, um, that's my opinion, okay? Um, I also happen to believe that most people who eat the standard American diet should be supplementing B12. And along with that, everybody should probably also be supplementing with a B complex. Because basically, you need all the B vitamins. And in the world that we live in today, with all of its plethora of stressors that we all have, even if we're laid back, life happens and our bodies carry stress. Um, things like prescription drugs, birth control pills, um, being married, being single, you know, all of these things, having a job, having children, not having children, you know, we're all at a little bit of odds. We all have issues in our lives and stress, as you, most of you know this, depletes your B vitamins. And so um, you really need the full spectrum of B vitamins to be able to absorb B12. You also need folic acid. And so what I have here, I'm not saying that you should buy this. This is just what I have that I take. Um, it's methylcobalamin. And there's a video underneath this video where Kevin Gianni really kind of spells it out for you as to why this is a more uh, preferable form of B12. There's several kinds of B12, but methylcobalamin is the more preferred type of B12. It is more easily, um, as your body more easily accesses this. You can absorb it more easily. And this particular one has a folic acid in it because folic acid and B12 should always probably go hand in hand. And most of the supplements that you would find are going to have it. I also really like um, the vitamin code. It's the raw vitamin if you've heard about it. Um, I'll put a link to, to that. You can go check it out. I like the raw, the raw vitamins, the vitamin code by Garden of Life. Jordan Rubens I think is, uh, is a pretty brilliant guy and he has some of the most innovative um, supplement techniques out there. I don't get paid for, uh, nobody's given me any money for saying this. This is just based on my own research and based on the integrity of what I know he's done in the laboratory with his all of his scientists and doctors and people. Um, it's an excellent product and it's affordable. Um, my favorite B12 supplement that I know of is carried at the Tree of Life Institute. Dr. Gabriel Cousins has it. 
it's expensive. It's like $70 for, um, I, I'm not sure how much you're actually getting in that. It would be the one if I had an unlimited expense account, I would be on that. But basically that you, you can get some B12 um, in fermented foods like kefir has some B12. Um, spirulina ha properties has B12, but basically it doesn't really assimilate into your body as a real valid source of B12. Um, bee pollen also has um, B12 in it. It's excellent to take, but none of these sources are really going to give you the amount that your body needs. Um, I've posted a thread with a lot of details in it in the Wellness Center today. B12, should I be supplementing? Now, again, this is just my opinion, and I do believe that you probably should. Um, one of the other things that people talk about is that like if you're growing your own produce and you've got excellent soil quality, if you've had your soil tested, you know, and you pull a carrot up out of your garden, dust it off and eat it because there's naturally occurring B12 in good organic soil. But in today's world, I mean, we don't we're, we don't always have the luxury of growing our own vegetables. We don't always have optimum soil quality. So, you know, Yes, you should definitely supplement your diet. That's that's where I'm coming from. That's my belief, and I would encourage you to do that. Um, in my book, Raw Food Cleanse, one of the things I say is that I the reason that I believe that vegan sources of protein, plant-based proteins, are superior is that protein from animals form relatively large amounts of uric acid, which contributes to osteoporosis, gout, arthritis, lack of energy, acidic body chemistry, aging, and much more. So people say, well, why don't you just go ahead? You know, if you're worried about the B12 thing, go ahead and eat meat. Well, there's a reason why I don't want to eat meat, okay? And that's it. I also know the statistics are for people who eat a, a heavy meat diet or even eat meat like three or four times a week, their chances of heart disease and colon cancer are much, much, much higher, okay? So, also, you know, I mean, I just kind of don't like the idea of killing animals. That's just me. I'm not into it. So, um, and I'm really not into, like, David Wolf talks about eating ants, okay? I, I mean, if I was out in the wilderness and, you know, I had an ant, I might eat it. I don't know. I don't think I really want to go there. I don't know. Eating insects, if you're into eating insects, I mean, that's what the monkeys do. You can do it. But, I mean, I just don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my two cents. I have posted links to go to. Um, educate yourself on this. Don't take my word for it. Educate yourself on it. Um, there are different tests that you can have ran by your doctor. There are urine tests, which I think the urine test is probably the better of the tests as far as, you know, checking for the levels to see if you have a B12 deficiency. Don't play around with it. B12 deficiency is, is can cause long-term neurological damage, which you do not want. So educate yourself. I'd love to get a discussion going on this. What do you think? We'd love to hear from you. I'll see you tomorrow.